So what we're looking at here is, is the Energy House building, and you're seeing on the left the solar thermal panels. So that represents a two-panel solar thermal system that would be um, in use in a normal home. So that would, that would generally heat about 70% of your domestic hot water needs. And the other panels are photovoltaic panels. That's a 3.5 kilowatt photovoltaic array, and that would be pretty representative of what a normal house family of four would use in a, in a modest-sized 1,200-square-foot house. So here we are inside of the Energy House building. The Energy House is built to be a learning lab for our students, learning clean energy technologies and the installation of those systems. And it's also designed as a community space for people to come in from the community and, and learn about clean energy technologies and how they can apply them to their households, their own homes, and their own businesses. So everything from the materials about this place mm -hmm. is special, right? Absolutely. This building was built to LEED Platinum standard. And so LEED Platinum is the highest level of basically environmental and energy design that is available in North America and around the world. So some of the points that we received for LEED Platinum are using local materials, having a building envelope that will last at least 50 years without any maintenance, and having all of the environmental aspects like fresh air, and also the building has to produce its own energy. So this is basically a building that not only produces its own energy to fuel the building, but it produces more than that, and, and actually we heat the main campus with, with the energy systems in this building. And I must say the materials you used are beautiful in here. Absolutely. All fir and cedar, fir, cedar, concrete, and some of the glue laminated beams are, you know, they're designed, actually they'll last for hundreds of years. So Bob, I understand you're going to give us a quick tour of your magical mechanical room. Downstairs. Absolutely, we have some neat systems in here. I'm excited to show them to you. Okay, so what we have here is a, a Kobe Pyro 540 kilowatt biomass boiler. And it, it's fueled by uh, wood pellets, basically from the, we, we, we're burning currently the wood pellets from the beetle killed forest around Prince George. Uh, this unit produces, like I said, 540 kilowatts of, of energy, which is half a megawatt to be, um, and, and that's thermal energy. It boils water, and the water is piped over to our main campus, and it provides about 70% of our heat throughout the winter in the main campus. And it saves probably in the neighborhood of, of thousands of green, tons of greenhouse gases by not having to run the natural gas boiler through the wintertime. Okay, so that's the biomass, Bob. What's exactly. next? Okay, what we're going to talk about next is our gray water recycling and rainwater collection system. So this system, it looks like a tank that you see in the back of a pickup truck going out into the country, and that really is what it is. Uh, what we do with this, this system is we collect all the rainwater and snow melt that falls on the building, and we also recycle and treat and, and, and filter all of the gray water in the building, and that's to preserve the rainwater that happens in and also to preserve the impact of, you know, it may, like large weather events where they put a lot of rainwater into the sewer system, uh, this system recycles all of that water. So this, you're collecting this water from the roof? Exactly. It comes down on the roof, collects it in the tank. We use this water for flushing our toilets. And toilet flushing is the biggest use of water in our homes, you know, generally. So, you know, this is a great place to save some, you know, some impacts on the environment. Great. So what's next, Bob? Okay, we're going to look at our, our geo exchange system now. So a geo exchange system, this is actually the system that provides all the heating and cooling for Energy House. The biomass boiler, we put that in because we wanted to be able to have an impact on our greenhouse gas production at the campus level, and so that system heats the main campus. This system heats the Energy House and cools the Energy House. So it's basically 36 holes drilled down, 260 feet in our back lot. We circulate water down into the ground. We send it down at zero degrees, bring it back up at about nine degrees. This, this unit is a refrigeration unit. It takes the heat out of that water, and that heat is used to heat energy house. In the summertime, we reverse it, takes heat out of energy house, pumps it down into the ground. So heating and cooling all in one. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah, and 300% and efficiency rating <laughs> because there's a very small amount of electricity used to run the the, the refrigeration system and the pump. So a wonderfully efficient system. Great. So what's this guy over here? Okay, this thing here is our, is our air exchanger, which is also a heat exchanger. So what this does is it takes the stale air from the building, continuously pumps it outside, and continuously brings fresh air in from outside. And it filters the fresh air in from outside, taking all the pollen, viruses, and dust out of it. It also exchanges the heat. So we, if we send warm air outside and bring cold air inside, 
by the time the cold air gets through the system, it's at room temperature. We only lose about two or three degrees in the process. Really? So it's that efficient? It's a hugely efficient, and it makes this building really the, the most healthy building to be in in Dawson Creek because it has continuously circulating fresh air. Okay, I understand you also have uh, energy production in this yes, facility. Yeah, we do. We generate our own electricity. So you notice at the beginning of the interview, out on the um, energy house, in the front of the energy house, we have our photovoltaic solar electric panels. Those panels feed, they convert electricity from the sun. We convert it from DC, which is direct current, to alternating current. And that electricity powers the electrical systems in energy house. During the day when the building is not being used that much, we're producing an excess amount of electricity. We charge these batteries with the excess amount of electricity that we produce. And once the batteries are charged, then any additional electricity that we produce goes back into the grid and we build a credit up with BC Hydro. So we reduce our electrical bill. And this is designed basically so our students in our clean energy technology program can learn how to install systems that are grid connected to so a, a, an urban system where people are grid connected and they're, they're offsetting their electrical bill by producing some electricity. Also, with the battery backup system, that's typically used for an off-grid setting out in the, uh, in the country where people want to have their electricity to be used all, all day and night. So you store it in batteries, use it through the evening. And that's also designed to actually offset your electrical production. So when you build your house, you set up the photovoltaic array on your house that's based on how much electricity your house uses. And at the end of the year, you've produced enough electricity and built up enough of a credit to your utility provider that you have a zero bill, so a net bill. That's amazing. So that's uh, so. You're you're not. Are you producing as much energy as you're using in this building? Or no, we're not. No, that that array is basically designed for a house for a home. So okay. so we are using that array to power the lights in the classrooms and our outdoor lighting. So there's a power failure in Dawson Creek. The only building that will be lit is our two classrooms and our outside lights. So there'll be no snow days for students. No snow days, no. <laughs> exactly. Great. Thank you very much for the thank tour. Thank you very Bob. much.